These strategy games have proved to be the best of what Steam Early Access had to offer in 2022 and well worth your money. This conclusion is based on their gameplay, recent player reviews, number of updates and the amount of content you can play in them, and they will, in my opinion, become fantastic games in 2023. If I missed any, please tell me down in the comments. Against the Storm is the best example of continuous improvement, content additions and updates made based on community feedback and you are hard pressed to find a dozen bad reviews in its thousands. This dark fantasy settlement builder with its production chains, roguelite, replayability and adorable art design has captured many hearts. It doesn't have a campaign, much of story or characters, but its gameplay loop of setting up a new settlement in a few hours to support your overall progress and then jumping to the next has proved to be both fun and fresh. Terra Invicta has totally different scale and gameplay, but it too found its player base, which loves its highly complex grand strategy gameplay of leading the entire solar system and most of Earth's nations against an alien invasion coupled with some highly simulated tactical spaceship battles. It is a game from ex-modders made with love for future modders and everyone else who enjoys toiling away for hundreds of hours to conquer through politics, technology, espionage and warfare. It started a bit rough on the edges, but it's already shining. Songs of Conquest started like that out of the gate and it only got more polished with a lot of balancing and content updates from the busy developers based on player feedback. This turn-based strategy adventure and kingdom management game full of RPG systems and tactical combat reminds a heck of a lot of Heroes of Might and Magic, and it is just as fun and captivating, but in a whole new and original universe. It has top-notch music and a great art style which sucks you in even more. Dune Spice Wars had a questionable start due to players expecting an RTS and getting a real-time 4x strategy game in Frank Herbert's unique sci-fi universe. But as updates started to roll in and content was added, so did the positive reviews. Arrakis never looked so beautiful and the gameplay flows almost like Spice itself on the edge and dangerous with half a dozen ways to win and conquer the dunes. Factions and units are unique and the gameplay is a perfect blend of RTS speed and forex complexity, playable by all but hard to master. Farthest Frontier came out to challenge Banish's top position in the survival settlement builder category and it might just manage to topple the king as positive reviews keep flooding its Steam page. It has the most detailed farming system ever. Villagers which lead active and fully simulated lives in your settlement, complete with diseases, dozens of buildings, items to craft, crops to grow and even combat, but with a pacifist mode for those who prefer peace and prosperity. With more content on the way, it will soon become Banished 3.0. Nebulous Fleet Command developers continue to improve and expand an incredibly advanced and complex tactical 3D simulation space game which is a joy to play but not easy to master in the least. You outfit and arm a fleet of warships and set out with friendly players to hunt down and destroy enemy players using a fantastic and customizable system of missiles and electronic warfare along with magnetic cannons and lasers. It is a sci-fi space experience very similar to The Expanse, but it doesn't have its own campaign. Yet. Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2 is just as ridiculous as it sounds and it's only limited by your creativity and its own unit types because it almost has no limit on the numbers which can go into millions. Its sandbox mode is where every player's dream can come true as it gives you total freedom to set up battles between real and fantastical creatures as well as humans from every era. It's exactly this feature that most players enjoy, but there are also others like the first and third person modes. It just needs faster content updates. Prehistoric Kingdom is a builder and zoo manager but for previously extinct animals brought back for your visitors entertainment and education. Its beautiful habitats and easy to use creative tools for building them have made it an enjoyable game for fans of the subgenre. Besides animals like the woolly mammoth or dinosaurs like the T-Rex, 
you can create more by finding their DNA around the globe. This one is very close to a true Jurassic Park game without breaking copyright rules, but it still has a lot of content updates ahead of it. The Iron Oat didn't make the splash I had hoped it would, maybe due to low diversity in the game world, but it certainly wasn't due to any lack of fun gameplay and great art style. In this turn-based tactical RPG, you lead and manage an entire band of mercenaries. In combat, you take four out of dozens of different characters and use their skills and abilities in all sorts of encounters. The other side of gameplay is the one where you follow the story, talk to characters and balance the scales of income and expenditure to maintain profits. The Wandering Village, on the other hand, did as good as I expected and the developers keep updating it with feedback from more and more players. Being a very original settlement builder with a giant creature as the foundation for the settlement certainly helped to make it stand out. Symbiosis of the creature and the villagers who live on its back, feed it and heal it, coupled with the dangerous post-apocalyptic world through which they both move, make it one of my favorites. Building space might be small, but tech, adventures and encounters are many. Captain of Industry doesn't wow with art, graphics or a deep story, but it delivers on what counts the most – gameplay. In this industry simulation and management gem, you get your own island like in Tropico, but there is nothing hilarious in its hardline economics or pirate infested waters. While your armed ship can fight off the pirates, only your analytical mind and savvy business sense can keep your settlement and industry going. From mining through product manufacturing and research, you grow, trade and expand, even launching to space. Clan folk might be another medieval colony simulation, which are a dime a dozen these days, but it is one of those rare good ones which brings some new elements. Because of its Scottish Highland setting, it puts a higher emphasis on settler lineage and multiple generation family gameplay and it isn't afraid to put children characters into the survival gameplay as they learn to fend for themselves. Mechanics of home ventilation and light, along with unique fire systems, complicate things further and require extra consideration from the player. Diplomacy is not an option, was love at first sight. A mix of RTS, castle and settlement building on procedurally generated maps, with resource collection and production, army training and massive battles topped off with fantastic magic spells and zombie infestations to make this even more interesting. Huge stone walls coupled with realistic physics for siege weapons make the battles even more fun and the developers have worked relentlessly to add more gameplay modes, scenarios, units and enemies besides lots of changes and improvements we requested. Stardeus is one more example of a new spin on an already packed stack of similar games as this colony simulation starts you off as the AI in a broken starship full of automated drones and human survivors. You are to repair and redesign your starship while exploring the procedurally generated universe with the choice of helping the humans or exploiting them that provides extra replayability. Research, production, building, food, oxygen, heat and power generation are basic concepts, while events and encounters with aliens, traders and pirates add extra challenges. Sapiens looked to me at first like one with no potential, but I must admit my mistake as the game takes more shape and receives great reviews. It is a prehistoric settlement builder with management elements which lets you follow the whole technological advancement of a civilization on massive maps. You won't find settler personalization here, but a game to practice your skill at careful allocation of resources, planning and building. It's kind of like a real-time game of civilization, but it needs a lot more polish and elements to earn that comparison. TFC The Fertile Crescent is a brave attempt by its developers to turn the audience of Age of Empires back to the more classical look and feel of the base-building RTS we grew up on. This is seen as much in the art style as it is felt in the gameplay. They have managed to make and keep adding many game modes while trying out new ways of tech research and population management to spice up the gameplay. It might not have received a lot of attention from players, but it certainly has potential and I hope it gains a bigger following soon. Astro Colony doesn't look like a fresh concept, but it's definitely a fresh execution of one. 
mixing, space colony management and simulation with automated production in an infinite procedurally generated universe with destructible planets. It's a really big sandbox to play in and you can have space stations, connect them together, as well as construct transport systems for resources using conveyor belts and pipes. There is a cooperative mode to play with friends in as you recruit astronauts, help them survive and research new tech to build even bigger things. I am the first person to call out bad early access games, but I also love to celebrate successes like these with you. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!